Pro ones hooked together in parallel. Both the wiring, the wiring is hooked in parallel, as well as the hoses are hooked in parallel. You have an input hose. That's the end on this cell. This hose, this is backwards here, facing the other way. That's the other input hose hooked to a 3 8 T fitting. Here's your gas output hose going on the out, coming off. This is coming out and going into the, uh, the bubbler tank where the gas is collected and then you have your output. Now keep in mind these must be hooked in parallel. Both the hoses with the use of a, a vacuum 3 8 T and the wiring hooked in parallel. The illustrations on the internet in the manual. You can't see the other side of this. Now, when we look at this closely, the output hose is coming out of the bubble tank, as I mentioned, it's passing through a professional flow meter made by a company that only produces test equipment specifically for different types of gas. This one's designed for hydrogen, HHO gas. This is a professional meter. It's not the fill up a liter of water in a bottle, put the tube in and all that foolishness. Yes, that may work if you got it accurately, but this is the way a professional checks it. Hydrogen is, comes out in a pulse, not a steady flow like your compressed air does out of a compressor air nozzle. So make no mistake about it, pulsing is the way it does it. This cell, these two cells hooked together, drawing a between 24 and 30 amp. The battery charger is not on. You see the connections here, but we're running off a 12 volt battery. The charger, wait, excuse me, the charger is on right now. We're gonna turn it off. Got to turn that off. We're turning it off now. The battery charger is off. The amps are off on the battery charger. We're running straight on 12 volts. Look at the output here. It's a steady four to four and a half and going up to five and sometimes six at 25 to 27 amps. You can see it. The reason why you have that type of surging right there is because if you look at the dry hydrogen cell, the fuel cell, you'll see it takes time to recover as it surges the, the, the gas out into the tank and fills up. You're looking at the inside on this cell and the outside on this cell. The one's facing the opposite way, so you can see the difference. Now, when you look at these closely, you're probably wondering now, at this amp draw and the type of gas that this is putting out, hydrogen gas, what actually is the temperature? You probably think they're frying. They're not. The end line is going to be the coolest line. That's the where the, where, where the, uh, the KOH electrolyte distilled water enters the cell. It's running at 89 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. 89 degrees. I'm holding it there so you can see it. Now on the outside, you're going to run a little warmer. 98 degrees warmer because it's coming out with the gas. So there's your temperatures right there. Very cool running cell, despite the fact, if you look back here at the meter, we're putting out four liters and more, between four and six. It's surging right now, we're getting a little vapor in there. It's causing the ball to stick, that's why it's a little erratic. If you look closely, you'll see a little vapor. That'll dry out, but it's reading, it's reading accurate. Actually, that drags the ball a little bit, because I don't have a vaporizer in line to catch any of the moisture, because it's putting out a tremendous amount of gas. Now, in this electrolyte mix, you're wondering, well, what did he do, dump a whole bottle of KOH in here to produce this kind of gas? Well, you'll do the test yourself. For one quart of water, you'll put two tablespoons of KOH. Now, this KOH right here has been grinded in a coffee grinder to make it a little finer. But on our website, you have to have a password that's devolved to those who, who actually make a purchase about the proper electrolyte mix. We don't have a pulse width modulator in here to tune these amps down. You can do that. Of course, the hydrogen is going to drop off. So, what we have here is two a uh, tablespoon of KOH per quart of water, which is about the standard mix. But there's a variation in that, and you look at your amp meter, that tells you how strong the electrolyte is, and that's what you go by, the baseline. The highest output is your baseline. So if you had a pulse width modulator in there, the knob would be all the way up. That reads the baseline, the highest amp draw you're going to get. That tells you the intensity of the electrolyte mix. You can tune it down by adding more water. You can bring it up by adding more electrolyte. Very, very simple. 
but be careful because this is a corrosive you should wear protection eye protection and hand protection gloves rubber gloves now we're going to put the battery charger back on it's off right now set to off amps off you're reading a little fluctuation here because it's feeding back but we're going to kick it on you'll hear it come on the, amp, the battery charge is now on you can hear it you hear the fan running and look at the amps Okay, it's right under, it's about 15 amps, it's fluctuating because the unit getting a feedback from the amp draw on the, the generators, the dry fuel cells, okay? But nonetheless, when we kick that in there, this thing blows hydrogen. Now look at, the re look at the back pressure in the reservoir. You can see it right there. You can see it bubbling. This is the back pressure needed for this gauge to work properly. You can't just shoot the hydrogen air for this to work, okay? So there you got the back pressure, you can see the intensity of the bubbles. If you look closely, you'll see them. And you can see the amp draw now is, uh, it's about 25 to 30 amps right there because we have it set to low, the battery charge. I don't even want to kick it up high. It's not necessary to put that much amperage into this system right here. You, this is enough to run a tractor trailer, a big tractor trailer. You don't need a whole lot of hydrogen like many people want you to believe. On a diesel engine, yeah, you can put a lot more hydrogen in it. When you're fooling with computerized fuel injection engine, you got to be careful that you don't overdo it. You don't need it. The ratio is on our internet site under Electrolyte Mix, LabellasAutoRepair.com. Now, we're going to turn the battery charger off again. It's off. Amps down. No fan running. That's off. You don't believe it's off? It's off. Now, look what we put now. Off a straight battery. Four to five liters per minute. There's your gas line. Look at the intensity of the bubbles. Slightly reduced with the battery charger off. Slightly reduced, but it's still pumping a lot of gas. And you can see the cell has to recover because it's, as the inlet line goes in, it surges it out. The, the, uh, the dry cell drops, the electrolyte drops, but it immediately fills back up. That's why you get a fluctuating in, fluctuation in amps. But nonetheless, this line right here is solid, liquid. You don't want gas coming up this line. If you do, you got air in the system. It's not properly bled. This line should be relatively clear, solid. This line pumping gas and liquid. You may get a few bubbles once in a while, but that's not, that's not a thing to be concerned. But if this line looks like this, you got air in the cells. It's not properly bled. See the internet? Look at the man. Thank you for watching this, genera this uh, generator, fuel uh, cell generators, and the demonstration here. Check our website. These are the best dry cells right now on the market. We say that because this little cell, don't be fooled, produces a lot of liters per minute. Thank you for watching.